uh, let's begin with question one. So like I said, uh, we advise you to try it yourself and uh, when you face difficulty, you can always refer to YouTube but uh, always um, always try it yourself first. Okay, so in this question, you can see that now uh, there are bottles floating in the sea. So remember at the very, very beginning, we, uh, I actually highlighted that for waves, uh, it does not transfer matter and it only transfer energy. So this bottle that is floating on the sea, in the sea, is actually like the matter that is on a wave. So when you have matter on a wave, uh, what happens is that this bottle will not get pushed towards the shore or away from the shore. It will just be vibrating up and down. So you may ask, uh, teacher, but in, the, in reality, I see uh, bottles uh, being pushed towards the shore. Uh, that is because that is the wind that is pushing the object on the ocean. So what happens if you, 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 you have, like, let's say this is the surface of the ocean and you have a bottle that is floating on it. What is pushing it towards the shore is actually the wind. If there's no wind and there's just uh, waves, what will happen is that your, your ocean surface will, will, will form something like that. And that bottle will be just vibrating up and down, up and down, up and down like that. It will not move. Okay, so let's continue with our question. So here, uh, you see these lines. These lines are what we call wave front. So what if what is wave front? Because your wave is actually three dimensional. So it, it looks something like this actually. Uh, and when that happened, um, wait, let me draw it properly. And when this happened, you can actually see that the top of the the wave can be actually uh, represented by dots and if you link these dots up it will become wave front so actually this line are like are like 3d waves like that you get what i mean so they are like like this yeah and uh, you can see that uh, particle one is riding on the top of a wave particle two is also riding at the top of a wave. So you may ask, hey, what happened to three and four? What if it is in between? So down here, uh, you can see that uh, this, oops, sorry, these are the crest, right? So what is in between is actually this part over here. Yeah, that is make up of the bottom of the wave, right? So actually three and four, they are riding at the bottom of this 3D wave. So down here, if you see which two bottles are on the same wave front, you can see that one, is on wave front number A, and then two is on wave front B. So one and two are actually not on the same wave front. But if you look at three and four, they are at the same wave front. It's just that their wave front is being represented by the bottom of the wave. So actually the answer is three and four. Okay, question two here, you see a slinky. So if you remember at the beginning, we say that slinky wave, this one, your slinky wave is actually one of the example of a longitudinal wave but for this slinky wave in order for it to become a longitudinal wave you need to make sure that you are moving it back and forth and you can see in this example you notice that there is this region whereby the coil are pushing into each other this is what we call a region of compression and then you can see this part where the coils are moving further apart. This is what we call refraction. And these are telltale sign of a longitudinal wave. Okay, so which of these are longitudinal wave? Like I said, your L wave, the only example in your slippers is sound or the slinky that is being pushed back and forth. So in this case, obviously, C is your answer. And you can see this question is being repeated again in 2012 just next year so it is very important that you really remember what is a l wave what is a t wave so here which wave are longitudinal like i said the only example you have is sound or slinky that is moving back and forth now not only in 2011 and 2012 you can see that in 2013 again they are asking you what is an example of longitudinal wave and of course is b again yeah okay question five they are asking about frequency right how do i know it is frequency because i see this unit hertz okay this is 
a unit for frequency. Then you may ask me, teacher, what is this M? This capital M is actually a prefix. It actually means 10 to the power of 6. So this entire number actually means that uh, the wave has a frequency of 100 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. It means that it will be 100 followed by 6 zero hertz. What does it mean? It means that your wave actually produce 100 million wave in one second. So it means that it produces 100 million wave in one second. So it is very high frequency. So down here, they are just asking you what is uh, megahertz. Amplitude, the unit is actually in meter. Speed, meter per second. And for your wavelength, it is a length, so it's meter. So for frequency, this is your hertz. So that is your answer. Okay, let's continue. This is question six. So now I have a slinky again. Two slinky, in fact. One slinky, it is vibrate up and down. The other slinky is vibrated back and forth. So remember when I say that slinky wave, okay, can serve as both L wave and T wave transverse or longitudinal depending on how it vibrate. So if I refer to my notes, in order to decide whether or not it is L wave or T wave, all I need to do is I need to compare direction of vibration versus direction of wave travel. And if it is perpendicular, it is transverse. If it is parallel, they are, if they are parallel, then it is longitudinal wave. Okay, so let's see which one it is. So down here, this is what we call the direction of vibration. This one is the direction of wave travel. And you can see that these two highlighted thing is showing you a perpendicular, right? They are perpendicular to each other. So I know that this is your T waves. And now if I look at it here, this is back and forth. Then after that direction of wave motion, it is also left to right. So this is what we call parallel to each other. The pink one and the blue one are parallel. So therefore it is L waves. Yeah. So once we know that then spring X, it is transverse. Spring Y, it is longitudinal. So the answer is C. Quite easy, right? Okay, let's move on to the next question. Which statement define the speed of a water wave? So a water wave is a T wave or a L wave. So refer to the notes. T wave or L wave. Yeah, okay, I think you already know. So once that is done, then I will need to look at it. Uh, okay, let's look at A. Distance. Well, is speed a distance? No, right? So this one is out. Is speed again the distance? No, right? Speed is meter per second. Distance is meter. So no. Uh, then I look at C. Uh, distance in one second. A eh? could be the answer. But let's look at D first. D, the distance in one second also. These two may be may be the answer so let's decide whether c or d so the difference between c and d and you will notice that the subject is different in c we are talking about how a particle of water move up and down whereas in d we are talking about how the wave front in this case your wave front is a crest right you can think of it that way that how a crest move along the surface so what is the difference between these two c and d now i'm going to show you a uh, uh, animation. Now, I'm going to analyze C first. C says that the distance that the particle of water move up and down in one second. So what does it mean? Now, what it means is that, let's take a quick picture. We are going to focus on this guy over here. This is how one particle of the wave is moving up and down in one second. So if you look at the uh, the animation, you can see that this 
green particle is like moving up and down up and down the distance refer to the vertical distance now this is not the speed of the wave right in fact there's no official name for it yeah so what is the speed of wave we will be looking at the crest of the of the uh, of the of the of this uh vibrating rock so let me take a series of picture one two three four okay and we we will take a look at all of this so at the beginning you can see that the crest is here this is the crest right around here you can see this is the highest then in the next moment the crest hey eh? sorry oops undo undo where's the undo undo where is it oh okay this picture is taken at the wrong time how do i delete this okay don't see this picture this picture is not taken there okay so let's begin again so after I take a series of picture, what you need to see is that this is the crest, right? This one is the crest, correct? And then as the wave continue to move, you can see the crest has moved to more to the right. Initially, the, the, the crest was, was around here, right? This is originally. And then after that, you can see that the crest has moved out of the window. Initially, the crest was here. Then the crest move here and then the crest move here and finally the crest is here now so the speed of wave actually refer to how far the how are uh, the speed of the crest so it's the distance that the crest move over the time yeah so this this concept a bit hard to actually explain uh, without a demo so if you are still having problem understanding uh, your your question your question this question uh, please let your teacher know and uh, he or she can uh, he she can we can we can explain it in class better okay question eight is basically just a, a recap of the slinky and you can see that it is very similar to your question number six right we say that if the slinky is move vibrated up and down is a t wave if the slinky is vibrated uh, back and forth it is a l wave and in this n-level question it is just a reverse right how do i produce a t wave well i have to vibrate it up and down how do i produce an l wave oh i have to vibrate it back and forth so what is the answer d or okay. so down here you will see uh, that the following question focus on uh, checking whether you understand the terms used in waves uh, so what are the terms used in waves amplitude wavelength frequency, period, these are terms that are used to describe waves. So in the first question here, you can see that they are actually asking you what could be measured by this ruler. So what happened is that uh, if I blow it up, uh, what you are seeing is that you will have two axes and that you have this wave that is going through. And uh, what happened is that they are asking you if now I put a ruler here, what I can measure and basically you can actually measure this to this what is the distance here right so actually the distance here is actually what we call what, what we call two times of the amplitude yeah uh, we can see the options so let's start from D D for uh, Denmark wavelength is basically peak to another peak this is one wavelength or you can take it as the bottom to the bottom this is also one wavelength or you can treat it as from here all the way to here it is also one wavelength so obviously it is not d speed of wave you cannot uh, use a ruler to measure speed you will need a stopwatch as well period is basically the time taken to make one wave so you definitely need a stopwatch so actually if you use a ruler on the vertical axis you are actually measuring the amplitude Okay, if you look at question 10, uh, question 10 is a structure question, so I think I will leave it to your form teacher. Let's fast forward to the next MCQ question, question 13. 
So here now you have another term which is wave front. So I have uh, illustrated to you earlier that wave front basically is uh, used to uh, describe uh, a 3D wave. So for example, if you have a wave like that, you will also have another wave that goes like this. And then you have another wave goes like that. So it is 3D, you see. Yeah. So what happened is that a wave front basically connects all the crest together like this. So this black color line is your wave front. Of course, you can also use the throat to be the reference and you also can define your wave front by the throat. So if you look at the the definitions here given in uh, A, B, C, and D. Basically, wave front is a line. It is not distance. So A and B can be crossed out. So this line basically joins the point along the peaks of the wave. So for example, if this is a peak, this is a peak, this is a peak, this is a peak, it joins them together. So definitely C is correct. Okay. Okay, 14, you will see uh, basically what happened is that just imagine that this thing is a toothpick and you are dipping it into the water. So when you push the, the dipper into the water, it will create these circular waves that are radiating out. Yeah, so what happened is that uh, here they are asking you which wave property describes the number of waves passing x per second. So they are asking for number of waves in one second. So that would be your frequency. So a frequency basically uh, uh, tells you how many waves is uh, being produced in a second. So if there's 10 waves being produced in a second, then definitely at X, there will be 10 waves passing through that point. Okay, next question here, you will see a slinky. So this one is a T wave or L wave. So you can see that the movement is side to side and that the wave is moving from left to right. So here you can see that left to right, you can see there's a perpendicular angle over here. Okay, if you imagine the plane is like that. So if the direction of vibration is perpendicular to the direction of motion, then it is a transverse wave. Okay. So knowing that now this is a transverse wave, what do we need to do? So uh, we need to actually find out how long does it take. So we are talking about finding time. And uh, I also know that the wave have to travel 3 meters. So this 3 meter has to be the distance that it travel. So in order to find time by the distance, I definitely need to find the speed as well. So how can I find speed? Speed is given by the formula V equals to F lambda. Let's see whether they gave us this information. So one information given here is 0 0.6 meter. It is from the bottom to another bottom. So like what I said uh, earlier, if it is bottom to bottom, then this is the wavelength. So we are actually given the wavelength as 0 0.6. Down here, we are also given the frequency which is what we need here. So now we can actually find out what is the speed of this wave. V is the speed. Uh, then your 2.5 is your frequency. And then you will have your wave length over here. So this will give you the speed. So once we find the speed, we can actually find the time quite easily. Uh, what we can do is we can use this formula. Speed equals to distance over time. We have already found the speed which is given here. So we can put down here 2.5 times 0 0.6. And then the distance we need to move is 3 meter given by here. The time we need to find. So therefore it will be uh, the time will be given by 3.0 divided by 2.5 times 6, uh, 0 0.6. So if you work out this uh, expression you'll be able to find the answer.